live here. Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome. And welcome to the 17th annual IP3 Awards. My name is Virginia Lom Abrams, and I have the privilege of serving as board chair for public knowledge. As you all well know, this has been a completely and totally normal year for everyone. Clearly, I'm kidding. As we gather together for yet another virtual event, I hope that you'll take away from this evening why the work of public knowledge is more important than ever. Never before has the work of the public interest community been so important, and public knowledge in particular, with its ongoing mission to promote freedom of expression and open internet and technology innovation, plays a critical role in shaping public policy in a way that deeply matters. Tonight is a celebration of public knowledge, but it's also a celebration of people who have been relentless in their advocacy for their communities and for consumers. People like Leela Bailey, Matthew Rantanen, and Jeffrey Blackwell, and campaigns like Stop Hate for Profit, all embody the principles of fighting and advocating in the public interest. In the public interest, those four words can feel so foreign in these times. 
But let us not forget that those four words are our North Star. And in the public interest is a concept that we, as a community of advocates, can never let wither and die. Tonight is a celebration, but it's also a call to action to continue to fight, advocate, and give voice to policies that put the public interest first. This evening, I'd also like to recognize the wonderful PK board members that have joined us and thank you for your continued support. Maura Corbett, PK's past chairwoman and whose shoes I can only hope to fill, Michael Petricone, Brewster Kale, Commissioner Michael Copps, Kevin Warbach, Laurent Crenshaw, Andrew McLaughlin, Frank Torres, Moses Boyd, and our newest board members, Mikhail Rosen and Daphne Keller. Thank you all for your dedication, your energy, and your engagement. Before we move forward with the program, I'd like to take a moment of silence tonight to honor and acknowledge the 200,000 Americans we lost this year to COVID-19 our friends, our family members, and our neighbors. May their memories be a blessing to us all. I'd also like to honor the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg. May her memory be a blessing to the world and to all who have benefited from her life's work and advocacy. Thank you. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Public Knowledge's fearless leader, Chris Lewis. Chris, it's all yours. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you so much. Uh, Virginia, uh, we're so grateful to have you as our, our new board chair this year. Uh, and thank you to all our wonderful board members uh, who are joining us, uh, especially uh, the fantastic Maura Corbett, uh, who served as our chair uh, for so long and through our, our leadership transition last year. Ah, you trade it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're still with us, Maura. Thank you. Um, uh, it's good to see everyone. Uh, it's also great that uh, even in, in this virtual uh, room, we can still benefit from the fantastic Bob Schwartz Quartet. Uh, thanks to Bob and the quartet for uh, loaning us their music once again. Uh, Bob's been doubling as a policy ally and, and band leader for the IP3 awards for as long as I've been here, and it wouldn't be the same without you, Bob. Um, and then welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us for the 17th annual IP3 awards. Yeah, every year, this is an event where we get all of our friends and colleagues together. Uh, we, we've got, uh, I know some folks here from our major foundations who support us uh, and, and they're represented here. It's great to see you all. Uh, I even uh, see some of our fantastic friends from industry. Uh, we, we love you guys. Uh, it's great to have you all here together in one room, one virtual room in the spirit of celebrating those who have made contributions to tech and communications policy. The IP3 Awards is always a fun and relaxing get together in recent years and, and I always look forward to the reception and the conversation uh, we have the coolest mix, I think, of public interest allies and industry folks and dedicated government officials sharing a drink, networking, who knows, maybe even finding some new paths forward on policy. Uh, but yeah, it's, we know it's not the same this year. We're just glad you guys could join us. And we hope you'll enjoy the next 90 minutes or so uh, that we planned. Uh, even though I know many of you have been on Zoom calls all day long, we appreciate that you took the time out to join us. While you're here in the main room, we do ask that you keep your sound muted through the program. Uh, it'll be a bit more free flowing, I think, in the, in the breakout rooms. Uh, also, please take the time as you guys are doing, use the chat feature to comment and share and, and connect with folks throughout the event. Uh, and hopefully it'll be as fun and interactive as possible. Uh, and just remember that uh, what you say uh, publicly in the chat can be read by everyone. So just keep it fun and keep it clean. Uh, Gigi Son, if you're out there, I'm thinking of you. Keep it clean, Gigi. Okay. Um, also, full disclosure, we are recording this event for Prosperity, uh, and we hope to be able to put it up on our YouTube page in the future. Hopefully, everyone signed up early enough and received our gift pack before the event. If you did, you no doubt have your PK flute ready to go for the toast at the end of the night and uh, are keeping safe with our PK branded face masks and the door opener tool, which I know some folks may not have seen before, still trying to figure out how to use, but uh, I know you'll figure it out. Uh, 
Uh, and, and if not, I hope you have a tasty beverage to keep you going through the 90 minutes. As I said, we have a great mix of industry and public interest friends here tonight. And there are some great sponsors who have made this event possible. And I wanna personally acknowledge them for their support. Uh, first, we have uh, our fantastic platinum sponsors, Amazon, Apple, AT&T, Dish, DuckDuckGo, Legato, Netflix, News Corp, and our friends at Sirius XM and Pandora together. Um, so thank you to our platinum sponsors. Also, we want to acknowledge our gold level sponsors as well. Bloomberg, uh, the Internet Society, T-Mobile, Twitter, Verizon, Windstream, and our friends at the Writers Guild of America West. Thank you, gold sponsors. We, and, and a lot of you are sponsors, uh, maybe at the silver level or the bronze level or our friends level. We, we can't thank you all enough for pitching in and doing what you can to, to help PK work. Uh, you can see the names on the slides here. Your partnership, uh, especially you know, folks in industry, your partnership makes our analysis at PK smarter. Uh, I say that all the time. And, and even when we may challenge you on certain issues, we appreciate it. And we know we challenge you sometimes. Uh, we're grateful that you see value in the mission-driven work of our amazing team and that you value the public interest community's place at the table in policymaking. This year, in these challenging times, we're doubly grateful that when we said we would be holding these awards virtually due to the pandemic, so many of you said that you would be here to support regardless. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, I also want to take a moment um, to talk a bit about 2020 and, uh, and our work at Public Knowledge. And I know 2020 can be a heavy topic, but, but uh, I think it's important that we, uh, we talk about how our work fits in with what's going on right now. You know, 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us, as Virginia said, and our country has been wrestling with a triple, triple whammy of challenges from the coronavirus pandemic to the subsequent economic recession and of course, the ongoing challenge of overcoming the legacy of white supremacy and racism in America that uh, has sparked so many protests. Sometimes it can be hard to focus on tech issues with so many fundamental challenges every day. But then we turn around and we see just how much technology is a part of our lives, how much of an impact tech innovation has on giving everyday people new job opportunities, new tools for essentials like education and healthcare, or new ways to freely tell their own stories in a course of diverse American stories and experiences. For, for those of you like me who cannot avoid living the challenge of grace every day, we've watched and I've watched with curiosity at folks who might be called uh, newly woke this year. Uh, the protests in 2020 were filled with the newly woke and it was personally refreshing to see so many folks who do not look like me show that they care about the inequities uh, that black people and other people of color are facing in our country and to be moved to do something about it. Uh, that, may, that may be just a few more people see this uh, uh, for what it is, that it's not a game, that it's about our lives. And I think that is something to build on. I believe that tech and media policy, the work of public knowledge and our allies is at a similar place right now. The full integration of technology in our lives has been real for many years, but it feels like this year, suddenly the nerds like us have been joined by a wave of newly woke voices who realize that policymakers have not done enough to protect the needs of the public online and in the media. Well, I'll give you a few examples. You know, millions of Americans have been left out from access to high-speed broadband for years. And yet suddenly, when its essential nature is personified in that child who is your, your, uh, your, class, your child's classmate, sitting at home without access to online schooling, suddenly people have woken up to the digital divide. Digital platforms, they've collected our data for years, but now more and more people are waking up to the need for comprehensive privacy legislation. Uh, fires, wildfires, hurricanes, other natural disasters have been wiping out communications networks for years. But when it's on the news every day and, and we're all home every day and you can't escape it, there are newly woke Americans ready to understand that we all need reliable standards and swift responses to keep people connected to essential communications. And finally, internet users have shared uh, misinformation and dated, debated facts for years. But now, sadly, when we see news conglomerates 
and political actors combine to use the virality of digital platforms to sow fear and distrust in our basic institutions of government and society, people are waking up. And they're waking up to find that our core institutions and our values are under threat. Just like racism, this is not a game. This is, about, this is not about who's up or down in Washington. This is about people's lives and whether or not technology and media will contribute to making us a more equitable and perfect union, or if it will be used to divide people and create greater inequity. So my friends, uh, folks in this virtual room and at this event, what are we going to do? What are we gonna do now that more of the country is woke when it comes to the public interest needs of tech and media today? Well, I wanna challenge you to do one thing. I wanna challenge you to invest in the growing voice of the public and the public interest community from new perspectives. So if you're our friends from industry and, and we love you, believe me, at some point, you're gonna to, to be worried about another company competing with you or, or acting as a gatekeeper. And it's the values of the public interest that can rise above the cynical view of two companies battling in Washington for what just looks like more money and more revenue. If, if you're our friends uh, who are here for, who work in government or you work at a public interest group, I hope you'll look at the communities that, uh, that you don't have constituents in. You know, you may be blue and urban and they may be red and rural, but the people and the families you will find there want the same things that you do. They want the ability to speak their own truth and tell their own stories. They want affordable access to open and secure communications tools that permit them to speak. And they want tools and policies that build trust in the systems and institutions of our society. These values are public interest values no matter where you live or what service you use. And this phase we're in with the newly woke, uh, hopefully is showing policymakers that our longstanding issues never went away and that we have new challenges that are upon us. They're critical to our lives and we must continue to solve them boldly or risk greater distrust and division in our society. So I believe we can do it. Uh, you know, again, 2020 can be heavy and, and this may sound heavy, but I have hope that because all of you are here, that you believe you can do your part and be a part of it too. At Public Knowledge, we wake up every day ready to work with each of you to fight for these values together. And I challenge you to do the same. And with that, uh, we wanna get into our, our program tonight. Um, since we're meeting virtually this year, uh, we've changed up the program a bit, try to liven things up. Hopefully you're not staring at the screen the whole time, but you can interact. In a minute, I'm gonna be introducing our special guest speaker. And then following the awards presentations, we will have breakout room conversations with our award winners led by our fabulous public knowledge team. Uh, hopefully everyone uh, followed the directions that we've been emailing all week about how to join the event and sign in with a, with a Zoom account. And this should make the technical transitions to the breakout rooms run smoothly. Uh, but if there are any issues, uh, our team will be here to help you. And finally, when we return from the breakout rooms, we don't want you to leave. Don't sign off, okay? Because we will wrap up the program with a special raffle giveaway, it's more like a giveaway than a raffle, uh, uh, and a virtual toast. And you need to be here and be present to win one of these prizes, okay? So, is everyone ready to move through our program? <laughs> 